<laughs> what did I want to say? <laughs> Welcome to the Post World Podcast from Calmac Studios Bunker, somewhere hidden in Berlin. I'm Pablo De Negri, your host, and today's guest is Daniel Benvenuto, a visual artist and psychotherapist that was born in New York and lives in Berlin for some time. And she's here tonight to tell us about her journey. Hi, Daniel. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. Same, same. Um, How does this work to be a psychotherapist and uh, doing uh, kind of this uh, art therapy uh, approach uh, to life that you have right now? Because you were in, uh, into art before, right? You told me uh, not so long ago. Before I was an artist, I was a psychotherapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to understand how this uh, uh, worked for you. Well... When I lived in New York, I was uh, a psychotherapist, so and for 15 years I was, so it was a pretty long time uh, for But me. But just doing this, let's say, this is what it means. Yeah, I was okay. uh, practicing as a psychologist, and uh, I had my private practice, basically, so I was seeing okay. people individually, and also running workshops, so like meditation workshops, mindfulness workshops, these kinds of things. So yeah, so that was that life in New York. And then <clears throat> I, so I wouldn't call myself a psychotherapist now because I'm not practicing as a psychotherapist. But of course, having been one for 15 years, it's informing my art. It can, can't not, you know. Sure. So. But you were parallel doing this uh, kind of alternative healing practices, let's say, or therapeutic practices, right? Like meditation, let's say, is not traditional. Uh, uh, when, I was a, uh, when I was a psychotherapist, I yeah. was. Yeah, so I started off as, uh, I still was studying psychoanalysis and all the more like Western uh, approaches. And I did that for a big portion of my career. And then I was starting to feel like, although the work was really deep because psychoanalytic work is, is quite deep and that's why I liked it. It was, you know, the, the going deep into the unconscious heavy. and yeah, <laughs> could be very heavy. Working with dreams, which I really love because I have a very active dream life and I use my dreams in my own life uh, pretty regularly. Um, so while it was quite deep and fulfilling, I always felt something was missing. So that's when I started getting more creative and I started turning to studying <clears throat> not only like meditation and mindfulness, I started studying energy healing and energy work. So like uh, it's Reiki. A lot of people know energy work by the, the term Reiki. So, yeah. and I, so I took a Reiki class, but I was studying with like healers from all over. So I was like kind of piecing it all together. And then I ended up integrating both of these in okay. my practice and starting teaching okay. about so it. Okay, so there was like an intersection moment. It's not like you left your practice and went into meditation. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I and that's when my work became more fulfilling, I would say, as a psychotherapist when I started like mixing it all up and uh, yeah, bringing both worlds together, the Eastern and the Western, really. And uh, these uh, dreams say that you said you have a very active dream life. Um, Do you always have this? Because I think uh, sometimes I dream and sometimes I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You, yeah. you always have uh, an active dream life? Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah I would say... Okay, there so I'm with a psychotherapist, so I want to ask this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say we're always dreaming. So what's happening is when we wake up and we feel like we haven't had a dream, it's just that we forgot our dreams. So for me, like... Uh, I pretty much dream every night, and most of the times I'm remembering them. So, and since I was young, I would be always writing about my dreams. So the act of writing and journaling about them starts creating like kind of a process within yourself internally that it becomes just part of you. So then it becomes more active. You kind of activate that life and Something it's like a friend. Not conscious in a way. No? Yeah. I see my dreams as like, they're like my best friends on some level because really it's like communications from my, I would say higher self or mm -hmm. my more evolved self sometimes mm -hmm. and uh so I often like 
will ask myself, if, if I'm having some sort of like challenge or difficulties, I'll ask myself before I go to bed sometimes to dream the solutions to hmm. certain things. And so that's one way I use dreams. And other ways, I just, as in the psychoanalytic way, you would hmm. like kind of, oh, you know, what is this, my unconscious telling me about it and interpreting like different things. And then I often have dreams about other people. So there's like psychic <laughs> dreams. And I really, there's like in the world of dreams, there's so many different categories of dreaming. And that's what I find so fascinating. Yeah, of course, because even if you don't um, believe in any like magical power of dreams or so, the effect they have in your uh, conscious life, in your day, day life, let's say, it already constructs an effect, you know? Yeah. Like uh, a lot of people feel they need to write to you when they dream with you, for example. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm one of those. <laughs> for, for, just to give an example, this already creates something, you know? Yeah. Um, and so how this how was the the journey for you let's say the, you were practicing in new york you were staying these 15 years in new york mm -hmm. uh, and is this something happened or yeah i well okay so i started very young i was probably like 24 when i really like started my own business or maybe 25 i started my own business right away as a psychotherapist and i was always feeling I had a passion for it so I did it that's why I did it uh but throughout my 15 years I always felt like something was missing somehow like I always was feeling a bit tired at times and I just felt like I don't know just like, yeah I just had this feeling that something was missing and it just kind of kept sticking with me like over over the years and it just got stronger and stronger and then what happened was I started uh, exploring this other, like the Eastern methods of, of, yeah. of working. And that got me kind of clicked me back into the creative aspect of it. it like expanded my meditation, for example. Yeah. Or. Yeah. It expanded. So I started getting more excited about it, but then still I was just like, uh, I just couldn't shake this feeling that something was missing. And then I was, had li been living in New York for 15 years. And so at this time I was feeling like I have to get out of New York. It's time to like go somewhere, you know, else explore a different city and then the feeling to move to Berlin came and yeah. then with that I just it was like kind of an epiphany I just like had this feeling like oh my god I don't have to do this anymore like I don't have to do something that even though I'm like so good at it and I'm like uh, there was a passion for it and I'm making because I'm making a lot of money I just like I was like what but I don't have to do it there was like this like should that was playing out you know yeah um, so then this, I'm like, okay, I don't have to do it. And then I, that's when I just decided I'm going to stop. And I just gave it all up. I had another business as well. Like so I had my own private practice and then I had developed, um, a big, um, I had a therapy suite. So I had a, I rented a, a huge space. I designed it with a, a friend and we basically were renting out offices yeah. to other therapists. So this was another yeah. business. And, uh, what make you... Uh, come to Berlin? Well, good question. So here comes intuition. Like I've, I, I've learned to like really listen to my intuition. So at the time I was like, oh God, like I am going to leave New York. I'm going to stop everything. And so I sold my one business to my business partner. I stopped my private practice. And, and then I was like, took out a map. I'm like, but where am I going to go? You know, <laughs> like I was looking at a map and I'm like looking at all these different countries. And I like, I heard the first thing I heard was like not Germany, which was kind of like funny in a way. Like, not, not Germany. Yeah, I, said, I heard not Germany, but then you took it as a challenge. But then the next days, I started hearing like it was like this whisper, like like Germany, Germany. Like it's like this whisper in my head. I'm like, what the fuck am I hearing voices or something? You know. So it was like this weird form of intuition that I never like experienced before. Then I talked to one of my friends and and I said, listen, I'm hearing voices. <laughs> I'm hearing those word Germany kind of play out in These my are mind. These your friend dreams you were talking about, your dream friends. Well, I, this was, no, this wasn't a dream, dream friend. This was actually okay. an actual friend. Okay. <laughs> and I said, uh, her, her name was Jade. I'm like, Jade, I'm like, I'm hearing the word Germany. And she's like, well, Berlin, you know, Berlin is like an amazing city. I'm like, oh yeah, Berlin. So then what happened was I went home and I Googled Berlin and I like started, I did a Google search of like what's going on in Berlin. And I started reading it and I just started crying like crazy. It was like weeping. Like it was this weird physical reaction that like, 
it like felt like, oh my God, this is a place I have to go. Like it felt like I was like missing it somehow. And this like extreme reaction, I was like, oh my God, I have to go. So that's how I came to Berlin. Like, <laughs> and uh, uh, when was this? Mm, this was 2015 is when I came here first for three months. And then I went back because I had to like start wrapping things up. So I like selling the business and all this other stuff. So then I came back for real, for good in 2017. So you basic, basically got rid of your life, your previous life and started something new or you make kind of this cut, at least symbolically or... So what happened was I was like, all right, so I'm going to leave everything. And I, I did that. And I had this, also the feeling that I'm going to do nothing because I saved enough money. So I'm like, I'm just going to do nothing because I really want to see what it feels like to do absolutely wow. nothing <laughs> and to see <laughs> what happens. Amazing. Yeah, to see like what, what comes in when you create a space, like this empty it's space. It's like the life of a DJ, for example. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what it's like. <laughs> so for a year, I did that. I did nothing. I like, But I mean, I was traveling and having experiences. And then in 2018, I just started having this like vision. Like I was like starting to like draw a little bit here and there. But then I just started having these like visions of like, like just this ideas. You didn't draw before? No. I really? never, I for never, reals? yeah. Wow. I never like was not really like artistic other than designing a space. So that was like the most of my artistic like mm -hmm. life in New York. So then after I just had this like started feeling so strong that I had to like make certain things happen. And then so I just started painting and I was like basically teaching myself everything. And it was through this second form of intuition that I just like just went to work and I started yeah painting and then it kind of took off from there because then I started after like six months of like just experimenting I released all my stuff on Facebook and people were yeah. like wow like and then I started like selling things pretty quickly through Facebook Facebook was still alive let's say Facebook was still alive <laughs> and still kind of is it's really like Facebook I get a lot of like commissions through Facebook because people have been watching my development and um yeah nice. I need to check Facebook again after yeah. like six years <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's how it happened. It just like, and then it, within two years, things happened super fast for me. It was like almost like I took the call because it felt like a like a calling. Really, it was like you have to come. And then like I felt like the keys start world started opening to me pretty quick. Like I met a gallery, a couple of gallerists, and I then got a gallerist like within two years and started having exhibitions. And I feel like I'm fast tracking in a way. So I'm like super grateful for that, even though it's challenging to be an artist. I think maybe having this background, professional background, you know, knowing how to run your business and so, it really does help you a lot. I think when you start from art and this <clears throat> part, it, it can take forever or you just maybe don't get there, you know? Yeah. And some people that come from, uh, I don't know, even a business or whatever, or something technical, um, and they become artists, let's say. Yeah. They maybe sometimes they understand how to play this uh, more uh, strategic or rational uh, mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of the game better. Can be. Is it theory? <laughs> I think it's on the one hand very true because uh, mm -hmm. I have that. I'm a good businesswoman, like, and I always be telling people, like, oh, I'm a good businesswoman. It's a businesswoman. It's going to be easy for me artistically. And on, on some level, it is. Like, I kind of know how to organize mm -hmm. myself, but at the same time. What I'm finding challenging is selling my own work. It's like it's it's vulnerable. It's a new. It's a, it's a different thing than selling like a, a, I don't know a room in a therapy suite or like it's just a different thing. It's like just super emotional, super vulnerable. So I, I'm like ah. I, I'm I'm struggling with it a little bit, and I'm realizing oh, wow, I thought this was gonna be easy, and it's like not totally easy. On the other hand, so. it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but you uh, you were running up your business, but not selling stuff in a way, or or you were selling stuff? Uh, your business, you mean your practice and so? Because you told me you had another business. What was this other uh, business? In New York? Yeah. Yeah, so in New York, the uh, business was super... The My, my um, role as a businesswoman was, like, very strong and quite easy. So all that was, like, flowing. I, like... <laughs> yeah, it, the money came fast, and I didn't have much of a struggle. As an artist, being my own... The... the yeah, owner, I don't know how to, how, what to say, but like, it's a bit harder <laughs> to, to, to sell the work of the my emotional, <laughs> Yeah, um, it's different. Yeah, I was, won I was wondering, someone with a business background, uh, of course, it's easier, but it's interesting that there's like a point where there is a tension, you know, yeah. um, on what you're handling with. 
when you talk about like an object outside of the art, uh, let's say value system, yeah. and when you're talking about just a product, like it's accepted as a consumable product without no aura or whatever. Yeah. And this uh, intersection of systems in the in an artwork, they're always present in a way, you know, yeah. this mm -hmm. internal tension and the, uh, what makes it valuable and uh, social references and so. So I find it interesting because it's, uh, there's always this uh, unredactable like, conflict, you know, something that is not resolved in yeah. a way in the relation of uh, art and market. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, this can be sometimes very well uh, be represented in, in an artwork, for example. You mm -hmm. know? Um, but you feel it and you experience it from your own experience always. And y you, f you get to that point of conflict, irresolvable conflict from different paths, let's say. Yeah. But it's there. It's, it's something there. that is not uh, solved in a way, you know. Yeah. For me, it's, I'm not. I'm getting very abstract, but it's very interesting. That's all. There is a big conflict, and I think uh, you just have to like sort of sit with it. I, I do find, like, it's because it's weird to market your art using the word marketing, but like I find like this act of like when I was creating my website and writing my biograph the the bio section and. It really helps you channel the vision. It really helps you understand what the hell yeah. you're doing. You know, so this act yeah. of like creating the website, which you need to sell your work, right? Or putting it out on Facebook in a certain way and like communicating about that. It really like, it really helps you like tap into your voice. So that's like the positive side about it. Uh, sure. And so. And it's part of nowadays society for sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, a huge part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the, in Berlin, in Berlin, you you made this change then that you were connected with galleries and so. Yeah. So right. So in 2018, I started just making art, and then uh, I think it was yeah, it was within a year, some curator asked me to be part of this exhibition um, at a gallery, and in that exhibition, the gallerist there he liked my the circle paintings I do, so um, then he took me on. And so, yeah, it started all here, basically, all the, yeah. Do you have problem finding, like, a, a conceptual justification for a project? You do? Conceptual. Because someone that studied a lot of art, theoretically, like me, ah, have yeah. a, have a, uh, has a lot of problems with that. And it might even be a reason not to start doing physically the work, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you have this problem or do you find easily like the conceptual, let's say, it's justification, you know, like context or concept? Like, do I feel like I need to have a conceptual justification? Do you, have, do you struggle with that or not? Or is it easy for you? That's the question. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think, because it's my art is, because I'm coming into it at a later stage of my life, like I'm 42 years old and... I like, and after having left everything behind, you know, I really trust my instincts. And so as an artist, without having had any education or teachers, um, of course, I'm always feeling, oh, I need some more tools somehow. Like I, I'm still learning some tools because you need tools to like actually channel your work. But um, mm. I just go with my intuition. Like I hear just internal direction and I just trust that as my is the thing and it works <laughs> it that's, really yeah, works that's and what i was asking yeah you know, it just works it yeah. that and you never told me about this part of the struggle that usually you know yeah and of course it has its, its causes let's say mm -hmm. and i think it's great because it's when the planets align in a way you know yeah for you at least yeah right? And maybe that's the power of uh, the art maybe I'm doing because it's coming from this pure, like, you know, intuitive. And there's an energy to that. I think people, like, that's often people tell me that they feel this, like, very powerful energy of, like, aliveness and purity somehow that it's, like, not coming from my brain. <laughs> that that it's, like, that's probably selling, selling, I think it's a shitty yeah. word, but, like, you know, that's kind of being transmitted. And yeah. 
Yeah, because I mean, the complexity of it is like to have a system of your own, a system of production, you yeah. know, but at the limits of culture and of language to make something new, mm -hmm. but out of things that are uh, well settled in a way, you know, from your background, from your references, from your... And it's not easy to get to this point, you know. When you get to this point, uh, you reproduce it, uh, But getting to there is very difficult. And when you do this uh, from outside, like what is called the outsider art, for example, mm -hmm. people that are not from the uh, art world, you know, mm -hmm. or um, I don't know, it can have very extreme uh, example, people not from culture or society itself, yeah. you know. Um, but since contemporary art is so multiple in a way, so interdisciplinary, you know, mm -hmm. um, Uh, it's very difficult nowadays to categorize this, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. the category of artists, and because uh, you find that uh, people that come in from uh, different uh, studies uh, or from different experiences understand something that has to do more with the core of the process of creation, for example, mm -hmm. you know, or get this faster and better. Yeah. Um, than people that just were uh, studying art, let's say. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I, I find this fascinating as, as also a manifestation, a cultural, social cultural manifestation of what uh, uh, art is. That is also a question, mm -hmm. <laughs> always. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of naive, I would say, when it comes to the art world. Like, I like, I mean, the amount of like exhibitions I've been to my life, you know, like, and just if you were to ask me about, like his art history I'm like totally like what uh, you know <laughs> um so a lot of the times I'm m working backwards so I'm like making all this stuff just from the intu intuition and then I'm like realizing oh I probably pulled from this and I pulled from that not even knowing like where I'm pulling from yeah but this is this place is uh, something that you can this intuition is something you cannot buy that's what yeah I mean, exactly you know? yeah I really um, it's oof, it's it's I really cherish it. I'm happy I came into it in this And you can way. fake it in, up to some extent, mm. you know, but you cannot fake it forever for everyone. So when you have this, uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, very always unique, you mm. know. Yeah. And the new uniqueness in uh, art, in a way, the process of creation has to do with this moment where the, you feel like a line and you feel like uh, sure you know, yeah. of yourself and what you're doing. And maybe you're not thinking about it, about it so much, you know. Yeah. Um, I think I'm, uh, I'm a bit uh, traumatized because uh, of uh, trying to understand art in a way, yeah. like in a very literal way and studying so much and at the same time being so far away, you know. Mm -hmm. And not until some point in my life I kind of, It has to do with your personal history also, with learning about life and so. Um, got more in touch with this uh, kind of um, personal, it has to come out from a personal necessity, you know. Mm -hmm. And I remember teachers from my university saying, like, uh, some people don't go to uh, galleries for enjoyment, you know. Yeah. And I was thinking, I was 20 years old, I was thinking, <laughs> like, I, I don't do that, you know. It, it wasn't coming out. Uh, like for me, the necessity to go to, and now it does. But I, I, I got there from a different, very different path than the one I thought you, you know, when mm -hmm. I wanted to get it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. don't want to get it anymore, you know. Yeah. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and your new, uh, let's say, view uh, after the, at this point of the journey, after making these uh, intersections and coming here and kind of. Um, living a new life, if I can say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where are you at and where do you think uh, is it going? Like uh, my career as an artist or just uh, in general? <laughs> <laughs> you can mix both. Mm. Where am I at? Uh, I'm, I just have this really strong desire to keep expressing myself you know and it sounds kind of cheesy but like this like act of like expressing uh yeah self-expression in this way that I'm doing it and to be taking the risks um 
that I feel like I'm taking and just keep keeping push it, pushing the boundaries uh, in order to not like create the next original art work, but to push the boundaries for me to keep experiencing this freedom <laughs> I feel inside of me after having left, you know, like when you leave something so big behind, like when I left all that, like I just like this, like it's like my art, my, my art, my heart, like just busted open. And this like level of freedom I experienced was so profound. And it was like a feeling of freedom, but also of like this like deep love for life. And I, and so much gratitude. It, it's just, it was like very overwhelming at first. I was like, I would be crying a lot because it was so strong, this energy moving through me. And I just want to go deeper into that. And I know yeah. that this act of following like my heart and following the intuition and taking the risks, risks takes me deeper into that. And so if I do that, everything else kind of falls into place. So that's kind of like the path yeah. I'm kind of like heading towards always, I would say. Do you feel... Uh, because you told me you were thinking about making street art, for example. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, but you're thinking not to start now, but to start about part of um, a tour you are going to make, right? Mm. In Italy and Greece. Yeah. Um, how do you see? How do you envision this? Let's say. Okay, so. Since, sort of, you, so, since so, you have visions. Yeah. Okay. So following the vision, right? Following the intuition. So first, it was like. Uh, I was making a lot of paintings, so I had these like circle paintings and these soul portraits. Yeah, that soul are, portraits. Yeah. This, this why, why are they called soul portraits? Uh, well, they first were there. So there's the circle paintings is the umbrella, and then under it is the soul portrait. So circle paintings are just like they're circles. Uh, I'm making these circles, which I saw after I started doing them, felt like energy to me. You know, this like energetic. Because like there's lots of geometric art that feels quite esoteric and quite intellectual, sure. yeah. and the ones the geom geometry that I'm using in my paintings feel quite like sensual and emotional somehow. Like it feels just energetic, feels like alive. So I'm like, oh, this is look, this is a, this is like feels like energy to me. And so then I have the thought, like, wow, like taking from my work as a uh, psychologist and uh, energy yeah. healer, I'm like, how cool would it be to like channel people's okay. energy you okay. know so then I'm like and then someone asked me like so I started selling the circle paintings and then someone's like oh can you make me my own uh so, circle painting I'm yeah. like oh perfect this is what I've <laughs> this is what I was okay. thinking about so yeah. so in this I was like yeah so that so I asked him to tell me his colors and then I just threw so and when I'm making these paintings I'm channeling this the energy of these people their soul you know the the, the soul essence that like Okay, so you are standing uh, on uh, your psych psychologist practice in a way, or your experience on what you, you, you are using this kind of um, a therapy experience. Exactly, yeah. And you feel like you are us using also your experience, like your personal experience on, I don't know, just being having so much many hours of being in therapy sessions or listening to other people's uh, stories about life. Do you feel all these narratives kind of uh, coexist in a way? Or are they echoes in your head or something? <laughs> What happens after you are 15 years doing uh, therapy and then um, you are doing something different that is not listening to people telling their Yeah. The problems. Well, with, with the artwork, um, mm, so with these soul portraits, I'm, yeah, I guess it's where it's coming in the strongest because mm. as I'm like making these paintings, I'm channeling the energy and I don't really have to know anything about them because I have that capacity to like feel people's energy and I see pictures, I see stories, I hear things. And so as I'm doing that, I'm hearing messages about people in their life and like what they need to like it's kind of like doing a tarot reading or something but yeah. like so then I'm hearing all these messages and then I'm doing the painting and then after the painting's done I write down all the messages I, I receive and I send them with the painting a letter kind of a reading in that sense it's very integrated but in my daily life I don't know I mean it's always part of my brain it's always part of my thinking <laughs> but I'm not like uh, analyzing I wouldn't say I'm not analyzing people it's just uh, it's, you are, it's like you are past that in a way you know yeah like you don't you need the different shape different forms 
of uh, that and I can understand because it can uh, um, it can be seen as something that gets too repetitive when it's always like the same technique of the same uh, yeah. references you know or the same uh, belief systems even to yeah. heal yourself exactly either, uh, physically or spiritually or psychically <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I, so through, I'm also a writer, so I published a lot of stuff. And right. I, so I'm channeling it through their, this understanding, this like deeper analytical understanding of like the human mind and the collective consciousness. I'm do doing mm. that through my writing. And uh, I would say, so you mentioned street art. So yeah. I... To mention something that doesn't exist already, but you're thinking about it as part of the... Vision. The next steps, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I just started these paintings. I started with paintings because that was the first, like, the uh, impulse. And then I moved into photography, and my last exhibition was a one on the body. And that was also, like, super, like, um, a big release for me. It was a big birth, I would say. Um, and now I'm feeling like I want to move more into street art using illustrations and words to help inspire people so like qu asking people questions or making statements is basically because I, I really have I think my if anything I've mastered is my ability to like uh, express myself through words whether it be writing or that's amazing yeah, yeah so like it's it's I and I, I feel it's I really always wanted to master that <laughs> I'm not uh, halfway there and it feels like this next step is more like going to be, I don't know, I mean, maybe not, I don't want to say more powerful, but like, I just feel like it's somehow I just need to do it. And so I, I'm going to do it and see what happens. <laughs> and writing was always part of your processes, no? Because you told me before, maybe off camera, I don't remember, that when you were a little, you were already writing your dreams, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I was always like keeping a diary, I would say. So I was always had this process That's of amazing. like, yeah, it really helps. Like it just, it always helped me like figure out shit. Uh, when I'm not like having someone to talk to about it, like I'm just like very, yeah, it always helps me. So yeah, I was always writing very young, started very young. And then when I was going to school, like I had a lot of teachers commenting on how like they were like, that I should be a writer and blah, 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 that my voice was unique. And so I kept getting that feedback over and over. So then, I mean, I like doing it. So I just started doing it and started like yeah, submitting my work and stuff. So I'm doing that sometimes, doing art. I'm doing like a lot of things. Like it's like, yeah. a bit overwhelming at times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, <laughs> how the hell am I going to do all this shit? You know? <laughs> but this is what you ask for, no? Yeah. In a way. Yeah. With uh, this energy in yeah. a way of being able to do all this, all this stuff. Yeah, because I can't do one way. Like I can't I can just relate paint. To that. Yeah. <laughs> I can relate to I, that. Yeah. <laughs> It's not enough, you know, like... If it's I, just one thing, even if it's the best, I, after some point I feel, like, trapped and need, like, to do multiple things. Because it's limiting, I think, like, to have one way of... Uh, for me, I'm not saying for everybody, because there's, there's many people who are, like, doing one thing and it's super powerful, but for sure. me, the way I need to express myself, I can't do it all just through a painting. I need to do, like, a writing or, you know, I need hmm. to write it or I need to, like, put it out in the street or something. Like, there are different things take different mediums. Yeah. You know, and it has more power through one medium versus the other. So Yeah. We ended up talking a lot about this particular problem in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because there's uh, today's society sometimes it seems that you have to be good at one thing, if mm. possible something visual that can be reproduced fast on the Instagram thread and be liked fast and mm. and it also feels like since I'm a kid that if you don't feel in a, a possibly one unique category and are good at it in standard ways, and so there's always like a questioning, and there's always like a, and I always have troubles, let's say, have problems or, or had struggled with this conflict because I always suffered a lot out of this, you know, like uh, mm. needing to be either one thing or the other, or, and I, I, I feel 
I enjoy more more when things happen like interdisciplinary mm -hmm. in the dialogue in between different languages or between different systems or platforms and something that is more like the relation in between those things, you know, mm -hmm. and not some unique um, aspect or from one view. No, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yeah, totally. But. Yeah, I think like we live in a world that's like ego driven and identity driven, right? This is the thing you got to be this, you got to do that. And like, I think it, it can be limiting for some of us. I mean, for some people, that's the way and that's great. I mean, we're all like, there's billions of us, we all are not going to be doing like, the same thing. So um, yeah, I think it's just a story that we're told. And I think that uh, I understand the conflict too, because like, leaving this one life and now in a new life, I'm like, starting something new that I've never done before, teaching myself everything. I'm like, ah, what's my voice? You know, <laughs> what am I, <laughs> like, I, I want to have a voice. You know, I want to have like a, I want to have an identity and I don't want to have an identity. You know, I just left everything. So like, I'm enjoying this freedom. And at the same time, I have this conflict of like wanting to be like having some sort of like stamp. Yeah. So it, it, I think it's like always something we have to balance. And maybe in one moment, we're focusing so hard on one thing. And like, it could be the painting in this like six months. And then, you know, yeah. then it's you move to something else. And yeah, and it all comes together, doesn't it? I mean, like, somehow, like, you put the pieces of the puzzle, and then it, you put it together, and it makes sense over time. But you think nowadays, technologies of and exchange communication wise the social networks are so are also still promoting this unique unique kind of uh, voice mm. in a way like uh, you have to show yourself only in a certain way and if possible just in that way or mm. you feel there is i don't know it's branding just a, it's they, it's a right. brand right like, because it's like you have to brand that has a lot to do with marketing logic let's say if you can if you can synthesize it into one simple understanding, you know, uh, then bet even better. Yeah. So I think this is where, like, adding up complexities yeah. or densities to some message starts to be difficult mm -hmm. with uh, digital media. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I but think I think about that, yeah. And I think that you kind of have to, like, trust like the authenticity of your own voice and what you're doing that that somehow even if you're doing painting today and then something tomorrow that there is a voice that is cohesive within that and that people could feel that and of course like you can't just be like you can but I think it's smart just to take things slow so you don't want to like release everything just like then it's kind of a mess I think you have to like sort of like contain it on some level and be mindful and intentional about what you're posting. That's mm. what I'm, I think is probably the key is to post some, if you're, we're talking about Instagram or Facebook, yes, to post with intention. <laughs> yeah. To post with intention. Why am I, why am I doing this? Are we just like posting just to get likes? Are we posting? Cause this actually means something, yeah. you know? But you know about how hacking your brain in a good sense, writing your dreams can be as a part of your neural, whatever. Mm. Uh, these things are playing uh, a role too in the construction of creating habits in, in our perception, cognitive, syst cognitive system, are, or are we like uh, compulsively also kind of uh, want to be part uh, of it? Um, I think there's a paradox there because it's like the it's the the world nowadays yeah. you, know, you have to adapt also we, we we are part of it but at the same time it's the fear of that is leading us to a more automatized thinking or loss of identity you know which would be a huge paradox and it's like how to be authentic in a world that's not you know right and that's the question is how to yes. be that and cuz it's alienating on some level like when I don't know, majority of people are playing this, doing this thing, you know, not even consciously, but like it's, yeah, so, but that's the thing, that's the risk you take, right? I think this is the risk, this is the path of freedom, hmm. the path of like making yourself like be uncomfortable in that way um, and just taking that risk and seeing where it goes, I would say. 
Yeah, because uh, uh, in a lot of aspects, it seems like we are living in a world that in needs uh, our understanding and uh, understanding of complexities, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem to be the case, at least in the first world part of the world that we are living right now. Totally. <laughs> or social media world or Instagram or whatever. It doesn't seem to be the case that we are going into the path of understanding these complexities that so much need to be understood, you know. And this is generated for someone that is a bit para paranoid, has paranoid tendencies like me. <laughs> Even if you don't think about it, when there's these contradictions in the system you are living in and you were your life or so, the fear grows, you know? Yeah. Like uh, um, you're fearful that at some point this that is not working will start to crack, you know? Mm -hmm. I think you're totally on point because I, I, I tend to see like the collective conscious as um, in a developmental stage and developmental stages. And I think we're still in adolescence, really. So we're, we're living from like an ego driven perspective, which from that perspective, like there's no complexity, really. There's no room for complexity. So I think the so next level of evolution is going to be ever we have to hold complexity. We have to hold like opposites together exactly. and we have to hold multiple multiple realities. Like two things can be true at the same time. And or three or four or five, yes. and it takes compassion. It takes being able to step into the unknown, right? To be yes. step into fear, and yeah, this is where we're at. And I think that's the next new narrative that needs to be developed um, through people like hmm. you, and you know, and like who want to embrace that. We have to start expressing it because if we don't express it, it's not going to become a reality. You know, it has to be become yeah. mainstream. So. But ex just expressing it, just thinking about it, it will not be enough, you know? Mm. This is the, um, the problem and part of the paradox also. Mm. Because the only system, if the only places you could have a voice in is these systems, you know, that yeah. limit the way you can express even in characters or in amount of um, photos or whatever. Then there's also the question, you know, if uh, uh, in which way this will help to change things. I already accepted that thinking, uh, think, only thinking about stuff will not make it, for example. Mm -hmm. At this point of my life, I have yeah. accepted that. Like, But for a long stretch, I, I believed so, that concentrating on the thing, it will help. But mm -hmm. it does, it, it, it's not enough, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> In this way, I in this way I also I always ask my guests um, as is, as a vision of the future, either optimistic or pessimistic, uh, because mine tends to be pessimistic, but not out of will, you know, mm -hmm. for yeah. reals. It's uh, like just out of kind of uh, uh, my own perception, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be hopeful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I want to be hopeful in uh, te this technocratic world. And this is where I kind of uh, uh, pressure my guests to tell me either one <laughs> or the other. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's my view? I mean, I, I would say I'm more optimistic. I think we're evolving as a species, and I think we're quite young. So we're like 200,000 years old, right, as human beings who have like the ability to think and feel all inside of this body, right? It's totally a huge challenge. And, and living like we are, li the modern world is like 0 0.0, I don't know what percent of that time, you know? Yeah. So it's a different way of living, you know? It's a totally... Different to the majority of the entire time of our species, which is like uh, mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah, so I think like, I don't know, I feel... Like in terms of like embracing the complexity narrative, which I think is where we have to go. Uh, I think, I don't know. I think it's possible. I think we all have to do like some inner work though, because really what it, what it means to embrace complexity on a very small level means you have to like know who you are inside of yourself. You have to know how like feelings and thoughts and 
stories live inside of you. So you have to do some, like, bringing back the psychology, you have to do some inner work. So once you do that inner work, you start realizing how complex you it's are. Like everyday work. Also. Yeah. I'm very kind. <laughs> yeah, and how trauma lives inside of you. Like, and, and like, I think we don't even have an... Uh, I think if more people do some, like, healing work on themselves, then they can embrace complexity. And the more people who are embracing complexity individually, then that changes the story. So... I agree. But how do you promote this? How do I do like, it? <laughs> in a world that people, as you say, ego world is very simple. It just wants the satisfaction or the one thing he needs, you know. But yeah. how do you promote the need for wanting other things that they're unique? Uh, mm -hmm. This is the question in a way, you know, because yeah. uh, we are all kind of in our comfort zone and... Mm -hmm. um, Uh, hoping others will get out of them theirs, but uh, yeah. kind of not entirely going out of ours. You know, we're always in this tension in a way. I feel yeah, like. well, I think we have to start r thinking smaller because I think we tend to think big, and I think change doesn't happen fast, and change doesn't happen big in big ways. So I think if we think about it like baby steps, so if you could like influence one person then that's a big thing. And like for me personally, how I do this, like for sure through my writing, because my writing is about complexity. It's about pushing an, a narrative complexity, making people, like, encouraging people to think in this way. So through writing is one way. And then, I don't know, through through like street art, for example, asking people questions. and That's important because yeah. what if people don't read anymore, you know? I yeah. see there's a tendency to not read so much, you know, yeah. as when I was younger, let's say. Yeah. And this is an old uh, people comment, but uh, mm -hmm. as you said, street art, for example, mm -hmm. like, you know, like different things that don't require this. Yeah. But all have limitations, no, to them. Yeah, I... I I think, yeah, it's a big challenge for sure. It's and I can understand the pessimism. And I don't know. I think we're going, we always go through cycles anyway. And we go through like, like rebirths and renaissances. And we go through dark times in Middle East. You know, like, this is like we forget that there's these cycles and that we go through. Uh, and then, hmm. uh, uh, uh. of course, we have technology and all this new stuff that we don't know what the hell we're doing with it. So right. this is a new thing, right? We have to contend with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I think, like, I, when I think about, like, hmm, what's the future going to be like with all this shit, you know? <laughs> like, trying to, like, tune into my, <laughs> the inner yeah. voice, like, the, like what's the vision? <laughs> I really feel like, if, like, oh, I'm like, what is the future going to be like? And I feel like the next, like, three, two, three years are going to be, like, weird and hard and, and uh, it's going to be, like, this polarized, like, this clashing. But we need this conflict, you know? We need to, like, have this thing to create more dialogues and I really feel like it can go either way I don't know like I think we there's I see in the world there's this like uh, there's a lot of passivity and a lot of just like this compliance True. and there's yeah. also like this like this spirit of like protesting protesting and mm. like challenging um, authorities and cons like narratives and it's happening again so let's see how we could do it this time I know, we can get creative, you know, like uh, we may be moving more to the country or something. Cities might die some kind of death. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Decentralizing. Let's yeah. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's like this and we go through these cycles. And if so, I hope we go uh, to uh, we're going to a renaissance, for example. Yeah. And don't forget, I mean, like, I always think, like, yeah, we live in this, like, world as it is, and we have to operate on some level from this reality. You know, we can't just say, oh, no, I'm not going to be part of this. Money doesn't exist. The, the, this, the, we can't say that. We have to, like, operate within this dimension. But at the same time, we are the creators of our own lives, you know, and so we can create our own worlds. We can create our own realities within this reality. And that's for me. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that like there's some you know this stories like I'm not living a life that has been told to me that I have to live That's because scripted. this is the narrative I'm like, not doing that like this is my life and I have one shot you know <laughs> so I'm like gonna do my yeah. way and see what happens and I find that like usually like it beautiful things happen if I do that you know so life yeah. is beautiful and it's fucking dark at the same time but this True. is this is what we this is what is
It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel, for being here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> ah, high five. I forgot. Ah. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to give us a like and a comment under the video. If you want to see more, click here and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.